and welcome to The Block Sauce, your web show that serves up the juiciest discussions in the world of gaming and Web3 culture. I'm your host, Arena of Team Ambassador, Jim Kieran, and today I've got an incredible guest lined up for you, so grab your controller, crack open a Mountain Dew, and prepare to get your game on. Identify. Pirates. Get me an open channel. Show me their trajectory and cross-reference with our route. I know that ship. Prepare the fleet. Put him on! This is Freitas' territory, my dear Catherine. You should know better than to pass through Echelon space. Mars bows to no one, including Echelon. Oh yes, the good old Marcolian way. Hiding behind your shameless sense of superiority. This is your last chance, Marlo. Divert course or we will make you. Did you hear that, crew? Looks like it's payday. Don't start something you can't f- Armor Division! At your command. I want all weapon systems ready for transport. Understood. Confirming all weapon systems ready to deploy. Pull up tactical array. Hey there, sauce enthusiasts. It's time to bring the heat with another electrifying episode of The Block Sauce. Today, I have Fitch with me from Parallels. How are you doing today, Fitch? Yeah, I'm good. What's your actual role within the company? I, I see growth management, so you're like the just director of marketing. Like, What's your official title? Yeah, I think the official title's head of growth, but you know, we, titles are kind of irrelevant in parallel. It's fairly flat organization. Um, you know, we, we kind of all participate equally in, in decision making around whatever it is that needs to be done. So, you know, mm -hmm. some days it's it's more marketing, some days it's more uh, business development and partnerships. Some days we're, we're thinking about things that need to be adjusted with product. You know, it's it's a growing company, but it still feels like a startup. Interesting. So how long has Parallels been around or how long have they been building? Oh, man, it's like two and a half years now. Um, you know, we were we were pretty early to the the NFT Web three sort of wave, um, you know, back in twenty twenty one, and mm -hmm. um, you know it's it's been a, an awesome journey up to this point. You know, something that started as an idea uh, that Kalos and and some of the other founders had, Mister Gone and, and those guys, and then just quickly developed into something that's now a global sort of IP and, and media franchise, and it's. Uh, all of that happening in such a short period of time is is pretty crazy. And I think people look at that and they're like, you know, obviously like early uh, purchases of NFTs and things were like, oh, when game, when game, and, and that's natural. But the pace at which this has all happened is very irregular, right? It's, it's very fast. This doesn't usually happen. You don't usually build something that's bordering on AAA tier franchise in that short of a period of time mm -hmm. from literally you know, nuts and bolts to, to where we're at today. Like that just doesn't, doesn't happen. So, um, yeah, it's been a, about two and a half years and, um, yeah, we're, we're sort of a day zero now, right? Like it's, it's, uh, the TCG is out there in closed beta and, um, uh, scaling up slowly, but surely, but, uh, we would say that really this is kind of the beginning, not the end. So. 
Oh, for sure. I mean, we've we've already seen on the timeline, like Parallels TCG alone is blowing up, but it's not the only game. Um, we've also recently started seeing Parallels Colony kind of yeah. catch traction as well. And I, I signed up for the beta. Make sure you guys go sign up for the beta. That one's also on Parallels Life, right? Yeah, it's um, it's like slash co- sign up slash colony, something like that. I'm sure when we post this, we can drop the the relevant links and stuff down there. So, you know. Rod, that, you, you got it, Rod. Yeah, find the yeah. link. I'll get you. I'll get. I'll get the link for Rod. We'll make sure it's in the description for everybody to sign up. Um, yeah, but that's that's another you know thing that's actively in development. And yeah, mm-hmm. there's a lot going on at, at Parallel. It's sort of the IP is being built out in a variety of different ways, and there's cinematics being produced, and the TCG is rolling out, and then Colony is in earlier stages, but uh, progressing well. And you know, we're we're really excited. So Parallels is more of the universe or the IP, and you're yeah. going to have individual games within that universe. Correct. Yeah. If you think about like sort of Blizzard as the mm-hmm. developer, then that's sort of Parallel Studios. Okay. Right. And then, you know, Parallel is like the the entire World of Warcraft type of universe. Right. Um, and within that, you have, wow, you know, the, the MMO, you have the the sort of rts type game you have you know all these different things you have hearthstone so the first offering that we're coming out with is the tcg and uh the the thought process behind that was tcgs are a really interesting way to build a universe um and you know in in a lot of cases it's the opposite way like the more big immersive mmo type stuff came first in the case of of wow and then later hearthstone but we're kind of like well Think about Web3 and think about how nice it is to have full digital ownership of your cards. And while you're making these cards, you're making pieces of art, you're making characters, you're making a tank, a gun, a a, a landscape. Mm -hmm. And so you're really, you're world building while you make the TCG. And, you know, we, I think the thought process initially was a TCG is biting off a little bit less, uh, which we found was maybe not necessarily the case. It's Mm -hmm. still uh, quite a difficult type of game to build, but not on the scale of an MMO, right? But we can kind of say, hey, we're gonna come out to market with this TCG. And then where the thought was like, uh, well, obviously all this emergent AI stuff, now we're gonna move into something like Colony. And then in the future, you know, if the IP does well and the TCG does well, then we could look at things like an FPS or an MMO. Um, And we've we've put some explorations of that type of stuff out there. But that's why when we make the cards, we make the 3D objects alongside the cards, which I'm sure you've seen, uh, because we're trying to build everything in like this open compatible, type of way. So it's like, if we get to that place where uh, those types of games are, are viable for our IP, we can quickly import the the universe into those types of modalities. So. so what you're saying is if you guys did create a shooter or MMO or something else down the, the road, the cards that I'm buying now should have a role in said games? Uh, yeah, and I think it's, you know, there is a connection there, right? There There is a connection there in the sense that you know, we would have the the intention is to have basically claimable uh, 3D objects associated with the cards. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, it's very early days in that type of a thesis. We need to see what that looks like, see what that means. But imagine that there's like a UE5 compatible 3D digital counterpart to whatever is depicted in your card. And if we were to build those universes, what that might look like is if the, the LAR rifle is a great example, the supply drop card you, you may remember where it's got the rifle sitting yeah. in the kind of briefcase, um, you know, what if that was actually a claimable rifle that you could use in an FPS, right? So that's the type of thinking. Um, it's too early to say what that's going to look like in any specific detail, but that's the type of thinking uh, that we're, we're working with. It kind of makes me think of, like you already mentioned Blizzard, so I'm going to go with them. Plus, I'm a, mm-hmm. I'm a huge WoW fanboy right now. I, I, um, I used to play WoW, yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah. like, for example, if I go and buy the StarCraft Collector's Edition, I get a little StarCraft pet in World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. So yeah. they've already kind of had the interoperability system in place. You guys yep. are iterating on that in a sense, or at least mm-hmm. that's the, the thesis, you know, it's... Plan, yeah, I hopeful. mean, people people in, in Web3 act like interoperability is a new concept. It's not, you know what I mean? It's it's more of this composability type of idea where like it's actually direct transposition of, of elements mm-hmm. between. But again, like I think Web3 got it wrong when they're talking about across IP types of composability. Like let's let's focus on 
what's actually making sense first. And that's within IP composability. So does it make sense within parallel to have one gun, for example, go between multiple types of game experiences? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. um, does it necessarily make sense for that gun to be in a completely different game that's not in our IP? Well, not yet. And, and there's functional difficulties around that. There's just like practical difficulties around that. Do people even want that? So, you know, this idea of composability is, is very strong. It's actually existed for quite a long time. This is really just kind of another step forward in the sovereignty and ownership aspect of it. It's not, it's not a new concept within it, uh, itself. Exactly. Like I can buy, sell, or trade my assets. It's not, oh, all of a sudden I can use this asset wherever I want. That's not what we're talking about here. At least not right. yet. Maybe one day in the far, far future, but everybody likes to go, oh, well, Fortnite, it's the prime example. And it's like, well, if you look at Master Chief and Fortnite versus Master Chief and Halo, you're not actually bringing that direct asset between. They had to create yeah. a whole new asset. There was licensing involved. There was a bunch of red tape. You know, I'm sure Microsoft or, or uh, 343 is probably getting a chunk of every sale. That's, Someone's getting paid. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it, it's it's a whole different concept. They're, they're, that's a licensing model. That's not an interoperability model. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, but, I mean, it's like there, there's these layers, you know, mm -hmm. and the layers are the UE5 assets. And they're, you know, what Fortnite has done is saying we're going to be the world in which it lives, right? Yeah. And you can import that stuff into the world. That type of a model makes sense you know i think i thought it was brilliant i mean i remember when uh i was watching the showcase when they presented it i was like boom like that's huge i mean this is this is the future but it's not like that revolutionary of a thing necessarily i mean it, it it's it's revolutionary because it's a great idea but it's simple you know yeah um you're not in essentially saying we're going to do some crazy thing like bring you know, Mario into, into Halo. Like that's not what we're saying here. We're saying we're going to create a place where a bunch of stuff can come and people can build these types of realities that they, that they want with the assets that are compatible with that, that world. So exactly. So I know that you guys have the starter decks, which I I've already yeah. got, grabbed a couple myself. Um, yeah. You also have the avatars. What is their, what's their purpose or role within this universe currently? Yeah, so the avatars are are really cool. I'm a huge fan of the avatars, and um, the team that made them is, you know, like worked at Apple and a bunch of different play Riot, and you know, they're mm -hmm. super credentialed 3D and, and AR designers. Um, so the avatars are representing you in the TCG. So they'll be your PFP in the TCG. Uh, they can be your PFPs on social media if you want them to be, and they will mod right naturally. Um, which I think, you know, that in and of itself has already proven to be enough of a thesis for a uh, significant portion of the NFT market. Um, but that was not enough for us. Naturally, parallel, we had to do some crazy stuff. So um, they will modify your, your prime uh, earnings in the game. So if you're playing with uh, Earthen Deck and you have an Earthen Avatar, you're going to get more prime. And then we, you mentioned Colony before. So the idea and this is still being fleshed out the idea is that the avatars would be um compatible with colony is probably the most broad brush i can paint with here <laughs> but uh the, you know what this might look like is if you have an avatar you would be one of the earliest players of colony mm -hmm. and perhaps be able to augment your experience so one of the things that we're exploring with colony is the ability for the um the AI to produce NFTs. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's something that's actively being, being worked on. So the AI could create 1155s and you have seen probably the 6551 technology that's come out where NFTs can kind of act as wallets for, uh, for other assets. And we're I haven't considering, actually. yeah. So it's, it's a really cool uh, new protocol and we're considering what that might look like where, uh, actual owned avatars are effectively wallets for NFTs that are created by the AI. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, again, this is very early days here and, and of I don't want to kind of commit to anything here or, or say that this is necessarily what it's going to be, but the intended future use cases of the avatars are substantial. Going back to the point about the LAR rifle. Okay. So you have a world that's being built where the tanks, the guns, the this and that, those things are composable between different types of realities. What about the people? The people are the avatars. So 
you have to compose characters between universes theoretically too, right? So that's also one of the uh, sort of ideal future use cases of the avatars is that they could um, actually be your your avatar your across character. multiple, yeah, your character across multiple types of games. And you go into a character creation menu and that's, that's literally what the team did when they made avatars is they essentially built a custom character creation engine in-house. Um, and that, so it's literally what it is and, and you've got your avatar and, you know, what if you could sort of port that into uh, other types of games? So, you know, again, very theoretical still, but the ideal future state of avatars is really, really cool. And they would go between a bunch of different types of uh, things. I mean, this is so far sounded like the most realistic use case for interoperability and composability yet within Web3. Like you said, it's not new. But it, you guys definitely seem like you've taken some notes from the existing models and you're like, let's see how we can make this better. So, yeah, I mean, and that's that's really what it is. And mm -hmm. I think that people have said, you know, I, I've seen comments on social media like uh, parallels is Hearthstone reskinned, which, first of all, is, is not accurate. Right. Uh, there's a number of meaningful gameplay innovations, IP innovations, uh, user experience differences, economic differences, so on and so forth. But. Is that is that an insult? I mean, like, is that is that meant to be an insult? I don't I don't know. I find that to be an odd comment because it's sort of like we don't reinvent the wheel; we make the wheel better over time. That that's a lot of what gaming is. I mean, the core TCG recipe that was created by the developers of Magic: The Gathering is great. It doesn't need to be completely rewritten. That would be the wrong way to start. You would, what you, instead you would do is you would say, what's really great about magic? Let's bring that in. What's not so great about magic? Let's leave that out. What's really great about Hearthstone? What's great about Runeterra? And then you would bring all this, and that's literally what the devs did. They looked, they love card games. They play many card games. They looked across all the games they played and they said, which elements do we want to bring in? And inevitably the core of the experience is going to feel similar to magic or Hearthstone. Right. It's like in I watched this great interview with uh, um, one of the like pioneers in the watch world. He's talking about the similarities between Patek, AP and Hublot. And they all have a similar looking face. And he basically explained like, yes, by by nature, they all have a similar looking face because they're all based on the concept of the porthole in a, in a mm -hmm. submarine. Right. So and over time, they ended up feeling more similar to people. But when they came out, nobody felt they were similar. So, you know, it, it, that's the same kind of concept. It's like, you're not reinventing the wheel, you're, you're improving on the design of the wheel. That, that's, that's what you're doing. And, you know, what we can do also that makes it feel distinct is, you know, have a, an IP that feels fresh and, and, and different. And, you know, there's so much high fantasy in card games. Where's the sci-fi? Right? That's Where's where the sci-fi? I've been biting my tongue since you said it. Like, you, yeah, you, I love I love World of Warcraft. Don't get me wrong. I do me love too. World of Warcraft. Me, me too. But love if my Starcraft, fans. if Starcraft had the same level of MMO with multiple planets to explore, raids, dungeon bosses, PvP, group content, I would never touch World of Warcraft. I'm a sci-fi guy. That is what drew me to Parallels. I saw it was a card game. And at first, I, I've told people since coming into Web3, I don't care about TCGs. I don't care about sports games. I don't care about none of this. But I saw Parallels. I'm like, I'm going to give this a shot. Somebody, I think it was actually you, gave me access to the game. I tried it and I was like, this is like Hearthstone if it was modeled after StarCraft. It's I've heard not many identical. people say that. It's yeah. not identical because first off, uh, Hearthstone, obviously the, the mana system and the banking system are two entirely separate things. So that really alters the progression yeah. and makes you have to decide, That's do I want to bank difference. this card or do I need to use it later? You don't have that in Hearthstone. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I think that that one difference right there changes so much of the gameplay, so much of the gameplay. And, you know, the, ironically, the people who say that every single time haven't played the game every single time, every single time. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So you haven't played the game and you've just determined that it's the same, the same game. Like, why don't you play the game? Just play the game. But yeah, I mean, um, there's it, one it's, more thing that you guys have going, and I, I yeah, I hope you guys expand on it. The cinematic, that first cinematic, oh, yeah. is something I had I never saw in Runeterra, I never saw in Hearthstone, I haven't seen in a single other uh, TCG whatsoever, and it was like, oh, this is not just a TCG, this is a story. 
there's an actual story that explains how this is going like if you just see gameplay you're gonna be like oh it's a tcg board but once you see that cinematic you're like oh wait i see how this is envisioned into the world into the lore like this isn't just a board i'm commanding armies I'm yeah commanding yeah yeah fleets you know yeah. that 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 so catherine cool. uh when it pans out and there's all the all the stuff laid out in the ship yep. it's so good i mean um there are i think like six more of those coming um Ooh. yeah and the same the same people who did the i mean that's that's all done in-house um that's all done in-house we have just insane visual artists and oscar and his team absolutely crushed it on, on that first cinematic um and then we have a number more and it's going to be interesting to see how many of those make their way into the game versus just kind of our more promotional universe building mm -hmm. material and then we have the comic as well i'm not sure if you've had a chance to read that but I was um, about to ask you about how the comics come into play because I haven't gotten that far yet either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, one one thing that we were talking about today is like, you know, probably making uh, like anyone who has an account or, or signs up fresh automatically gets a digital readable version of the first comic. Um, so that's probably something that we'll do. Like thus far, they've been, you know, collectible limited edition NFTs that you purchase. The reason being... Um, if you, if you have one of the top two editions, like rarity editions, uh, those will qualify you to get physicals of those mm -hmm. of those comics, which are, you know, it's we're working with Raid Comics, who does Marvel in DC. They're like super, super elite comic uh, creators. And the comics are amazing. They're they're so good. And uh, they're an important piece of the, of the puzzle here in terms of like fleshing out the story more. Mm -hmm. The cinematic, you're getting the grandiosity, but like, what it, like who are these people really you know and yeah. the the comic the comic pulls you deeper into that and i think we're we kind of realize that like this more limited edition format is good for collecting but we also want to make like a non-nft readable version available in a much broader way so um working on ways that we can do that right now and i believe i read somewhere if you collect because you said the the highest i think it was two tiers gets you a physical collection if you collect the entire series of that rarity don't you get a hardback version you get a hardcover that's all of them in a mm. row now that to me is like holy grail status i i like i want it i think I, that that's i think that that's going to end up being a very 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 collectible item from the parallel world and uh, i've been buying every comic drop with that in mind and uh i'm also going to get all the the paper covers my favorite versions framed and put somewhere over here so uh yeah the, the covers are insane i mean sasha uh sasha v's cover so we have like two people from the uh raid team and then one person mm -hmm. from our team make the covers each time so it's uh mateo sclera is one of them he's like super famous comic artist um and but sasha v's covers are unreal the the second comic the kathari one her cover is easily the coolest piece of parallel art in my opinion it's unbelievable the Kathari, the two, and it's like Magnus crouching and Meredith is standing. Oh my God. It's just, it looks like Avatar. It's like, mm -hmm. it's un, it's unreal. The quality of the art. I mean, it's, uh, it's so cool. And I just, as a huge fan of parallel, it's to me, one of the coolest things to collect. Um, maybe not the same as the, as the cards or whatever else, but it's, it's cool to me. So. Well, I guess I could share my screen. We can move on to the game because we've talked a lot about everything, but I haven't shown the game yet. Um, yeah. As soon as I figure out where it went, I guess I'm just gonna have to share my entire screen with you because uh, it's always doing this to me. It doesn't like to find the games for whatever reason. Da, 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 da. There we go. So I haven't finished my rookie matches, and as you can tell, um, <laughs> it's not it's not for want of not playing. I will tell you that right now. I have tried. To win as Shroud, I, I, I cannot win as Shroud. I've played so many games and I found one immediate detail. If I get put up against Cathari as Shroud, I just, it's forfeit. Game over. Well, after after the patch, I think it's uh, a lot has changed. Cathari got super, super nerfed. Uh, I don't know if super nerfed is the right, but they got nerfed, definitely. Um, Shroud is about the same. Marcolian got buffed. So, Wait, Marco you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Marcolian got buffed. I, mm, uh, mm. Marcolia was my favorite before the balance changes. Now you're telling me my favorite's even stronger. Oh yeah, mm. a number, a number of buffs, like four or five. 
pretty significant buffs. Um, the two decks. So that might be that might be a good place to roll, you know, on the on the Marcos. I was about to say the two decks that I bought during the uh, the initial mint, which I believe is it is that is there a time limit on that? Because I noticed it was still going. No, great. it's 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 ongoing. Yeah, I mean, even after the on chain summer uh, promo with Coinbase ends, we're we're still going to offer those for sale on the site. That's one of those just things like there's certain products that we we offer that are more just like you know whenever you want to grab this, they're they're available to you. Um, and then there's like the the primary pack drops, which are always sell out extremely quickly and are, are kind of the most is there a tight. way for me to replay the cinematic for people oh there. Oh, well, yeah there is, right yeah i mean you can i think i can't recall if that replays the the cinematic as well um i should know that but <laughs> <laughs> got yeah, the legal of course yeah yeah okay well there is the friend system well, i think we can drop the the cinematic probably in as part of the the promo for this right so or the, that's uh, what we'll do. Part. Yeah. So you, by this point in the video, you guys should have already seen it, but that's what we've been talking about with the cinematic. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna. We actually might be able to play against each other because the social system's unlocked. Can you invite people from the social menu? Uh, yeah, you can. You want you want to give give it a go? I don't even think oh, I, my right. client's yeah, not yeah, even yeah. updated because I yeah I've just been working too much. <laughs> and it was the patch was yesterday, so it's like. I've, I've, I actually, this morning, I had to go download it because I saw in the Discord, it was like, hey, you're gonna need the new client. And I opened mine and it was like server error. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna have to actually go to the website. Crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that because we had to update the launcher as well. Uh, early days in beta, you know how it is like. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I'll go get stomped in rookie mode then. The patch is nice though. I mean, it, it's there's a ton of performance improvements. Like it, it feels a lot slicker and uh, a lot of bugs got fixed too, so. I just, I my big thing is TCGs make me anxious because I don't know every single card and going into PVP, it's just like, I'm going to get stomped. I know I'm going to get stomped. And Not that's why I haven't gotten through my rookie Mars. matches because the, the few that I, you know, I have gone found. into, I do get stomped. Then the ones I that I actually know, like the Marcolian Augencore, I go in and I do decent. But to be fair, I also got one Marcolian match and one Augencore in before the decks launched and it was Gather against AI because there weren't a ton of players server. back then. Yeah, yeah, the, the rookie ended up thinning out. I mean, yeah, you got a lot that you can re-roll here, to be honest. I'd keep the gunslinger and the, the veteran, probably. The rest I'd probably re-roll. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm probably going to use that for a bank. Yeah, that's, that's fair. Ah! Yeah, I mean, this well, is a pretty favorable matchup for you. I mean, typically now people are running Lemieux, but you've got the, the starter deck, so you you got Catherine. But, I mean, Thanks. The, with a lot of the changes to Marco, they're they're pretty good against Shroud. Oh, the, they moved the confirm button. I was looking for it in the old spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, on the right side, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got it in, in my turn. You can tell it's but yeah, I mean, you, the TCGs. Yeah, you got a lot more, uh, the units are a lot beefier now. Um, so I think it's the trigger happy, like a, a bunch of them got, you know, nice changes to them, so. It is pretty easy to get field wiped if you weren't paying attention. So I do kind of appreciate that. Ooh, this is gonna be hard. I mean, you could, you could proc assault with that. So you could attack with your your gunslinger. Oh, I mean the crack shot got yeah dropped to one cost two. That's crazy. But yeah, the um, you could proc assault with your gunslinger and then get the two the two draw if you wanted to go that route. Yeah, I just got to figure out what I want to bank. Yeah, I, I mean the, the veteran the veteran is a the veteran is a great card, so I would keep that. Exactly. That's like that's one of your ramp cards. And this is one of my oh crap cards, so. Yeah, I exactly. Like and I mean, base. it's at a at a at a one cost now. That's such a that's such a nice card. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It's again because if if you think about it, you're playing Shroud, which has removal. So any cards that just deal damage right away without needing to be a unit on the board, I think. Because that fire support could just get banished. So uh, yeah, do the guns. Yeah. First. We must move on. I had to think about that real quick. Get some extra cards out here, so I know what I'm doing. I mean, you're in you're in a good place here. 
so far, but I, I have played Shroud, and I know that they can ramp up pretty quickly, too. They, they can. They a slow start, but they, they definitely can come back. Oh, wow, I got some high-cost stuff now. You got some beefy stuff now, yeah. The damage. Now, this one, I love this one, especially against earthen units, because they usually have high health, so it's good to throw that out. And, oh, see? There it goes. Already Just losing a little, stuff. A little management there. It's yeah, that card enough. used to be much, much cheaper, and it was, <laughs> it was so OP. Yeah, Banner, Bannerman is uh, another great card. I mean, got a lot of good stuff here. Ooh. I don't want to bank I mean, anything. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's tough. You play an effect. Uh, I don't really get a ton of effects though, so it might. I mean, you be you there. have the crack. Sh you have the crack shot, but you know, uh, you, you could you could maybe bank the the hired gun and get the the veteran out and try that maybe. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, we'll do that. I mean, it, I don't know if he's gonna have a banishment to take care of that right now. Well, we can get both of them out. So. Oh, hello. Oh, right, because uh. Yeah, the second the yeah. second unit second unit buff and go. then if you if you do play crack shot next turn you're gonna buff the see i mean now he's got to choose which of the two threats because they're both gonna keep getting resolved beefy. that's what i'm saying exactly <laughs> i love solar grenade game. another another amazing card i i just love that card any cards that are gonna giving you utility when banked i think are just fantastic oh that's right <laughs> One damage to one random enemy target. So realistically, if I uh, now I just need an assault cart. Actually, oh, you got an assault. Mm, so I might have yeah, to save so, it. Yeah. So if he doesn't, if he doesn't put a unit oh, out, there here, it is. See, that's fine though, because again, you you still got your veteran out, yeah. right? And you're gonna proc assault if you, regardless of what you do here, you know. So you could bank the grenade, and you're gonna attack with the veteran and get assault, and then you could play that. Is, does the Claymore deal two to any target? Yep. Yeah, to any target. So that that's a nice that's a nice swing here, I think. Yeah, I, I, I'm pretty much with you on that one. I'm gonna hit him there. Then we're gonna proc the assault. Claymore, armed and ready. Yeah, deal two, two damage. There. Deal two more damage. Gonna, this is gonna that's get gonna beefy. Buff up. Yeah. I mean, again, this is you see how much better Martholian feels now. It's like. Oh, it, it before it felt kind of slow. Like if they took out the the combat veteran early, that was pretty much crippling. But now I'm starting to see that it doesn't necessarily revolve so much around combat veteran anymore. You have more it's, combos. There, exactly. Yeah, there's more. But like I said, I was enjoying Marcolium before, so like making it even stronger, especially. So I've gotten her out a few times. And uh, once I put her out, that's usually a pretty Attention, good one. Please. Yeah, I mean, oh, Shroud no. can obviously like banish her, but you know, gen in general, she's a great, she's a great unit to have out. I mean, you could, yeah, you could get Ooh. her out this turn if you wanted to. So I, is there a, a benefit to revealing banked enemy cards? I, it's a, it's a more complex mechanic. Um, I don't think that that's something that like this deck is really wanting to do. And thus, I think Recon is kind of a suboptimal, suboptimal card. Okay. So remember, Put it out there. yeah, if, if you do play Heavy Weapons, the second card, so you could play Heavy Weapons and then Catherine, and Catherine's going to get buffed if you want to go that route. Or I've you could do a better idea. Crack shot. Hold in position. Oh, and then this here, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then he gets buffed. <laughs> yeah. See, it's just, it just gets out, you know? It just gets out. <laughs> It's, yeah, it's rush, rush face. Right now. Rush face. This is what I mean. It, you know, how are they gonna? You know, even if they have the honored stewards, even if they have, you know, they're not gonna be able to. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> that was an early and now I see why. That's so brutal. Oh my god. <laughs> oh man, he had no defenders or anything. If he had defenders, I four can see right. there. Oh my days. That's the first time I've had somebody concede to me in general. So you got a you got a pack too now. So yeah, that's yeah, cool. pack. Let's go. What do we let's get? See, let's see what we got here. Open pack. Open pack. Okay, some. Oh, you got some some pretty staple cards here. Let's see what else is here. Oh man, you got a bunch of stuff here. Oh nice. That's like a bunch of bread and butter 
Marcolian cards right there. I know. <laughs> but the thing is, I've actually I've got a decent collection already um, because I went and bought the the starter packs. Oh, I, I got my filters on. Um, the one thing I noticed is there's no filter to determine between like NFT and non NFT card. Yeah, we we're quite aware that the uh, the this system needs a bit of a an overhaul. <laughs> it's it's a little there's bit. There's a lot needlessly. of options here, just not that one. <laughs> A little bit needlessly complex at this at this point. So, actually, I, I personally I appreciate this. I understand as a newcomer who may have never played a TCG doesn't know what they're looking at. Uh, definitely can be a bit much, but I appreciate this many options. I just can't tell what's something I paid for. I think I, I think the yeah the main thing is just like having the NFTs like go into the deck by default. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, that wasn't the case before. So. I do have to say, I kind of dig the fact that I got this from my my booster packs. I like Star Chart. I'm I'm a I'm a fan of Star Chart. I mean, that's a card that I have run with Mark Cullion specifically in the past and with Universal. So, you know, imagine you're like turn six, turn seven, mm -hmm. and you need you need that little that last little thing just to get it, and you play Star Chart, and it's much easier to find it. So I, I, I really personally love Star Chart as a card. I, and also artistically, I think it's one of the most beautiful cards. So I know right now there's rookie mode and quick play. Uh, ooh. Oh, I've got versus AI now? <gasps> there you go. I have been, I, I didn't know if there's gonna be a versus AI. Again, I'm an anxious player. So like playing against other people. Now you can, now you can deck. tinker, yeah. Oh, I can tinker. Oh, that's awesome. And we got private matches. So my question yeah. now is we have, you know, I, I do have a little bit of experience with uh, previous TCGs like Hearthstone. They have mm -hmm. like the um, the dungeons and like PVE type modes. Are Is that something yeah. that's planned to, to be on the way? So that way we get more like ch PVE type challenges? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that well, there's going to be a lot of new ways to play in the, the relatively near future. I know that the game team has expressed interest in more of that type of uh, type of content. As far as when that would be in there, I'm not sure. But I, I can tell you that like within the next six months, there's going to be a lot of new ways to play parallel that are not these ones that you see right here in the menu right now. So, yeah. This is just my want. I'm sitting here imagining it, right? And I'm like, campaign. You guys already have the ability to make cinematics right. and stuff like that. Well, that's, I mean, that's, I agree with you I that, like, imagine story, that. And it forces me to try the other factions and characters. I want, like, a challenge mode, like, where you set up, hey, you got to destroy your opponent in one turn because it makes you think about how the cards all work together and your available banked energy. And I, I, I see a lot of training opportunity to get people to where they feel comfortable doing the PvP. Yeah, I 100% I agree. And While I expanding the lore too, <laughs> there's a there's a lot of room to to do that, and I like you know you you were thinking the same way that I'm thinking about it. it's like mm -hmm. when we have these cinematics like where is that gonna live in the in the game experience is that like once I complete rookie with a faction I unlock a new cinematic like where you know what I mean is that like where does that factor in so I think you know there's again it, uh, the thing I would emphasize here is that this is uh, the first patch of a beta. closed beta yeah, so exactly. there's, beta, there is so much more room to go here. <laughs> and so many more things to explore and add to the, the game experience. But I'm, I'm with you there. I think it would be very exciting to see that kind of stuff. And uh, Augencore, what'd they change with Augencore? Uh, so Augencore, I think the main thing that people are crying about is a rack and then uh, Jury Rig Juggernaut got uh, one cost increase, but is that is that really that consequential? Like, I think I think Augencore is still super valid, to be honest. I mean, um, it's it's a great mid range deck. It's a great OTK deck. You know, I I, I, I don't think that they got the nerf stick really that bad. Kathari got the nerf stick. That's <laughs> that's true, right? I knew but... Kathari was gonna get the nerf <clears throat> stick, so I was like, I'm not gonna buy a deck because I'm gonna wait and see how they how they're balanced later. Augencore yeah. and Marcolian were my first go-tos. Just the, the nucleotic into artifact appraiser combo was objectively unfair. Like it was it was just not it was not fair. So they, they nerfed that and, and a number of other things. But then, you know, for example, they made cunning skip <laughs> that old thing can be our machine. Machine. So I think people were like, wait, hold on, what? And then you know the, the devs put out a podcast where they explained all this stuff. 
it's very logical and, and they're, mm -hmm. they're they have a they have an approach they have a thought process you know and uh and i think it makes sense Workshop and, online and, you know so i would Combat encourage people to listen initiated. to that podcast if they're having questions One about chance. it oh this is a so weird <laughs> <laughs> i mean oh you got the turn you got the zero and then you got the one yeah the, yeah that's that's what i would do yeah but um it's actually a pretty good starting hand I, and then you got the yeah. recon easy easy bank of the recon there easy bank <clears throat> you said recon yeah oh, bank right, right 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 and then you can play your your one drop and put the put the zero cost upgrade on it and then you'll get an additional draw i hope john notices i mean this me. is a pretty pretty solid start for you i would say I don't disagree. Yeah. So, um, is there going to be like a seasonal rotation? Are we going to see cards kind of go in and out each season, or are they all? Well, is the plan to have them all remain valid as long as possible? Yeah, I, I, I think that the cards are intended to remain valid as long as possible, but there will obviously be new things that come into the ecosystem. So, mm -hmm. um, not this next battle pass, but the one after that. Uh, that's where we're going to start introducing, like the premium battle pass. There will be cards that can be unlocked as part of the completion of the battle pass, and then the, the expansion set is coming up. So, you know, that's there's a lot that will will be coming. Um, oh yeah, this is interesting. So, this is tough. I mean, you can't really I use everything. the PSA. You, I, you can't really use the PSA, right? Not yet. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're probably not going to have a unit out that you could use that again. So I would I would probably put the the unfair advantage, yeah. and then just attack with it. Well, I was thinking of putting this on here because then I'll get to draw cards. Yeah, that's true. Well, you know what? Mm. Nah, I... Wait, what? Wait, what happened there? We're gonna need a decision here. No valid here. cards? I'm confused. Oh, I, I don't know what happened there. That it feels was... like it might have been a, might have been a bug. I'm not. Upgraded friendly it, unit. It, it it looked like it played it as a. Because I have an upgrade. It even shows that I have upgrades on it. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm confused. That feels like it was a bug. Possibly. <laughs> yeah, I, I <laughs> that didn't make any sense to me. I mean, it happens. It's beta. Yeah, that is true. Let's see. So, upgraded unit has plus one, plus zero, and armed. Hmm. A lot of different ways you could go here. Well, I'm trying to save up for this, and if I can keep augmenting it and then throw that on there, that's going to be nice. But if they remove it, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. I mean, you could uh, upgrade the gunslinger I'm too. That. Yeah, I think that's what I'll. Well, I still need to bank something though. I don't want to get behind on my energy. Oh, this is tough. I forgot. What's the armed effect do? Uh, it means your your damage takes priority. Uh, oh, how do I get out? Oh no! Uh, right, right click. Oh, there we go. We're uh, gonna need a decision here. Gotta choose. Get him. I'm kind of rushing here. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. I got, I got a bunch of cars back, so that works. Yeah, I mean that's that's not a bad outcome here. And you got your your juggernaut workshop, which is going to produce uh, the unit for you next turn. Oh, see, there it is. I knew it. I I, I called yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It happens. I mean, you got two amper amperages. You could probably get rid of one of those. So yeah, if you bank the amperage and you play that, you can pull the amperage back onto it. One man or you can pull anything really onto it that you want. I'm thinking I'm gonna go with plus one plus zero and armed. Yeah, that's probably a good, good play. Cause now I can take him out. 
without losing anything. And... Uh, no, you can still. You can, so you can play your gunslinger, and then at the end of this turn, you're gonna produce a juggernaut. So that that can take that can kill that unit if you want. So if you end your turn here, you can get the artillery juggernaut. Yeah, like look at this. So now. If you produce the artillery juggernaut, you could kill that unit if you want. And this unit enters the battlefield. Oh, I forgot that it gets that one. Yeah, okay, it's like your little, the defense. your little factory. Yeah, I mean, the defense is good. The, the nice thing about Juggernaut Workshop is it's all situational. Yeah. You know, it's whatever you need at the time, which is, is why it's a nice mid range, kind of balanced approach. Now, the uh, decks that we bought, they came with their own heroes, didn't they? Never. Go in well, the, the heroes are just automatically unlocked, right? Like you, you just ah, have. Okay. Yeah, they're not they're not purchasable uh, things. Not well, not in any strict sense. Like we are coming out with cosmetics for them in the future, but the you don't actually buy them. They're they're there. Wait, so it says at the end of each player's turn, create a two two howler. Is that two two for me or two two for each player at the end of their turn? Uh you. That that Ooh. card's incredibly incredibly strong. Yeah. That's that's one of the win conditions for Agincourt is getting that out and just bum rushing the the dogs we call it the dogs you know. I mean I I would I would probably try and get that out to be honest. That's what I'm thinking. I just gotta figure out which one. Let's see. I think I'm gonna bank this one. Get that bad My boy out. Rise. Yeah. Um, I mean you, you're looking. I mean, I don't know how much that unit's gonna be a problem for you, but yeah. You have armed on that, so you, you didn't actually lose anything. That's why I was, armor. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's the, the Howler being shielded is honestly so crazy because they can't they can't one turn banish it unless they have an honored steward. Or they like have they two can, abilities. Well, they, yeah, exactly. But either oh. way, that's gonna be costly for them. Yeah, so Brand, I mean, you know. The thing is, like, if you try and trade into Brand, you know, you can either get rid of him right away or sort of ignore him, I feel like. That's... Draw two cards. Salvage. Oh, that's nice. I mean, your security officer is also part of your, your win condition here. The security officer, the more he gets upgraded, the stronger he gets. And he's, he's also shielded when you upgrade him. Stop right there. I don't really need. Let's see, we got three points. One minute. So this is an upgrade. Yeah. But then, so now yeah. he's going to become shielded, so he can't be banished immediately either. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, Security Officer is a great card. I, I would argue it's probably Stay the most away. potent. You know, logging over card. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just cranking away here. We're gonna need a decision here. And then another dog comes out. See, this is what I mean. Like, it's it's so abusive. Like, it's actually insane. This is ridiculous. If I don't win in the next turn, I'm gonna be salty. If he's got like a I mean, they would they cards. would need they would. I don't think they have anything to stop this. Shielded. See, that's what I mean. The shielded. Like, it's just. Uh, Oh, I was hoping the shield would save it, but it didn't. No, because that's a, that's a direct banishment effect. Not it doesn't matter, my dog came back. <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, you're, you're just absolutely crushing here, so... <laughs> There's zero chance you lose this. <laughs> I'm out of field space. Oh, no, I'm not. You're telling me I can put down as many cards as I want and there's no limit? Yeah. Oh, this is dirty. One man trash. And you can bring back one of these. Yeah, it's just now you're now you're really pummeling him. <laughs> this is just and silly. You can put that on there too. Let's see, wait. Who am I, who am I putting on? This? That's the overkill. question. Who do I put it on? Armed, shielded, and eh, we'll put it on him just because. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna get buffed again anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, over. it's over. You, you, you got him covered. Here. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Absolute dominance here. 
See, this is what I mean. It's like, hang on, I gotta screenshot this because this is just silly. Yeah, feels feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> feels bad. Yeah, you you just steamrolled in there. Oh my gosh, victory! Yeah, nice nice game. I Our mean, I, this one's fun. Of course, good. I, I don't know why people are upset. I well again, so I never understand why people get upset because they balanced. Yes, I get that you bought cards, but a lot of these were blind purchases. At least if you bought the yep. decks. If you're going buying them on secondary, I mean, you can go buy secondary uh, sales Magic the Gathering cards, and in six months they'll be banned by any official tournament. So, yeah, it I mean, the, yeah, the 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 thing is that these are it's all gonna find its equilibrium here, you know? Yep. So if Shroud got nerfed a little bit, or if a Cathari got nerfed, then it's like, okay, that's not, you know, these aren't like things that are permanent, right? <laughs> that's that's the whole point. <laughs> that's the entire mm -hmm. point of balance changes, that these are not permanent. It's like things are in flux, you know, so. Oh man, that was just, that's been my, my best experience par uh, parallels to date. I, I say that, but I had one really good pair uh, Marcolian match. I, I don't know what it was. I just, I couldn't sleep one night. I woke up and I was like, man, I, I just, I don't want to jump into anything too crazy. I'm going to play some parallels. It's like two o'clock yeah. in the morning and I get matched up against somebody and it was just a steamroll. I felt so bad. They were playing Earthen, I remember. And they kept throwing out defenders. And I'm like, you are annoying. Just let me kill you already. They couldn't hit me with anything because I kept killing it all. But I was like, I'm going to destroy you eventually. Even if I have to kill every unit one by one until you were out of cards, this is going to happen. I had an entire field. He had nothing but defenders. And they kept passing defender back and forth between each other. And I'm just like... This is the best match I've ever had. Like, yeah, I'm winning and I'm steamrolling, but it, he's putting up a fight. Like, this is a legitimate struggle for me to finish the fight. And it started getting to a point. I'm like, he's going to he's going to 180 this on me. Like, I just I, he's going to play something and it's just it's going to go from I think at one point it was 30 to eight. And I'm like, it's going to go from 30 to eight to like it can it can zero. happen like that. Exactly. It can happen like that. I, I've been in many Marco matchups where I have them five or less and, mm -hmm. and I can't finish it but this is where like we're talking about star chart where you get star chart and then you find orbital and then you orbital them and it's done you know and i think like that's the cool thing about marcolian they can deal so much damage from the hand you mm -hmm. know on muster or on effects um and you know that's really really potent so you can finish the game that way but there's so now the units have become more substantial for marcolian um at uh you know, reduced cost or, or higher stats. So they're they're very well rounded, I would say, you know. Some needed higher stats, let's be honest. Now the yeah. ones that gain stats on attacking, maybe not so much, but I don't think those were the ones that got touched if I remember correctly. I think it was the uh the other <laughs> the other ones. But the uh um, I mean it's it's not veteran, like you know it. yeah it's not like other other factions don't have these these kind of things. You know what I mean? Like Earthen has the Dauntless Axeman, which everybody's least favorite card right now. You know, it's so OP. Uh, and they've had Mizra Loyalist for so long. And Mizra is just, I hate that card, you know, with a passion. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's its its about time Marcolian got some love. And, uh, again, I don't expect it to last uh, that long where it feels this advantageous to play Mar Marcolian. But, you know, again, I, I think all factions right now are, are, are viable and, um, you know, really fun to play. So. It's all about learning the cards figuring out your win condition and trying to play for that. What, what yeah. I noticed, and this is my issue going into a new TCG as well, is I don't know the cards. I don't know the win conditions. And I think something's OP simply because I don't know how to play around it. And I yeah. hope that that is the case here where a lot of players over time will eventually be like, oh, you know what? I thought this was overpowered, but realistically, I just needed to do this instead. And it's not that bad. Here, here's an example. So before this patch in the beta... Everybody was like, oh, the the Juggernaut uh, with, or like John or whatever, Iraq, whatever people were playing with the, mm -hmm. the Jury Rug Juggernaut, that's too OP because it's OTK. It's like literally one defender, any defender prevents that. Like a 2-2 a Stoic Cell Sword would completely disrupt that strategy. Mm -hmm. And they talked about this on the podcast. It's like, are you running defenders? Do you have no defenders? Like why? <laughs> Everyone has access to defenders. So if you're playing an OTK deck, where is that thought process? Like, you know, why not play a, a defender? So, um, 
yeah, there, there, there are ways to interrupt things and, and prevent things. And obviously like some of the more straightforward aggro rush strategies right now are, are a little bit harder to prevent. Um, Qatari. But Mark Lynn, yeah, well, I mean, Qatari, you know, they got, they got, they did get nerfed, nerfed, but before the nerf, yeah. I saw a Qatari they were, they were super immediate strong. concede. <laughs> they were, the thing with Qatari was that they were able to keep going, right? Uh -huh. Marcolian, I think, is a lot beefier now, but they, the problem with Marcolian still remains that you can run out of steam. Um, I have if run you're out not, of cards and had nothing to play multiple times, and it's it's yeah. rough when you end up in that situation because if you have you no gotta, cards you got to have a no bit of draw. Exactly. you got to have a bit of draw, and I think that's that's the mistake that I've made the most playing Marcolian is I'm not focusing on draw enough. Um, I'm just kind of like, oh, let me rush, 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 and then <laughs> I don't have any cards, and I'm like, oh, shit, I just lost the game. Yep. You know, so... That, uh, that has happened to me on many occasions. <laughs> but um, Shroud, Shroud's the one that I need to figure out. And I have an idea of how to play the rest of them because I have ex yeah. you know some experience with the different types of decks and other TCGs. So I've watched people play Earthen. I feel like with the right healing and defense, like you you can become unstoppable and once you get into the late game because it is slow. Earthen is Earth very strong. Now. It is. Yeah. Um, and then obviously the Cathari, it's basically, I, 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 what's the word for it? Uh, aggro. It's your aggro deck. You just throw out as many units as you can. They all scale off of each other and it just, it, it gets a little overwhelming. Um, then you've got the Marcolian, which I feel is kind of more like your tempo deck. Agincourt is your combo deck, but Shroud, I, I control, I guess, control deck. Yeah, it's, it's, it's control. I mean, there, there's. I don't the understand the singularity system. That's where I'm hung up. Yeah, I mean, what what seems to be the meta now is the new dawn paragon and kind of mm -hmm. going going into the singularity and fetching stuff back out that becomes a problem for your opponent. And there's a number of different okay. win conditions like you know Bora or playing Brand and then summoning the corrupted visions after he leaves the field or Leonid is another really powerful card. Um, Leonid basically steals their units or relics. Um, so, you know, I think the shroud generally speaking is just bleed the game out, you know, it, it, let them kind of expend their energy and resolve it. And then your threats develop turn eight, turn nine, turn 10, you know? Ah, uh, so it's definitely something you, you, you're trying to keep control of the board. You're not trying to be aggressive. You're not trying to, to really like make plays early. You're trying to just keep it in your favor as long as you can to wait till you get that big one. And then once you get generally, the big ones out. Yeah, generally speaking, but there there is, you know, now with the, the some of the changes that were made from alpha to beta with Shroud, the Singularity Steward buffs off of uh, banished units. So, you know, if you get the Singularity Steward out early, you keep it out and you banish and keep buffing it, that can be a win condition. You know, I've seen people get 12, 12, you know, singularity stewards, right? Or like, you know, 12, whatever stat, like they, they become really beefy really quick. So, you know, that, that's a win condition too. And, and I think it's just, you know, are you able to maintain control is, is the, the one common factor there, you know? Okay. So I may have to practice with Shroud. I love complicated decks and that sounds like kind of where I should be leaning because yeah. realistically I'm playing the decks that I'm comfortable with and they're they're easy to learn, hard to master situation like the combos just they're in your face combos, right? Like you can yeah. look at the cards and just know, oh, this all goes together. Stroud on the other hand is something you you kind of have to watch your opponent's moves and play yes. off of those. Definitely because I mean the the new dawn is is a lot of what it's doing is stealing mm -hmm. cards, you know. And so if your opponent is playing you know, a beastly defender and you banish it and then steal it, you know, that's, you're having to kind of read the situation a little bit yeah. there, but I think shroud is a lot of fun to play and you could play it in more of a straightforward manner with brand. And, and a lot of top ranked players are playing with brand. Um, or you can play what I think is a objectively more complex strategy uh, with new Dawn, but um, it's, it's still really, and then Neve for, um, for shroud is, is really interesting as well. It's like, you know, basically when she comes out, summon a bunch of shit that, that you had, uh, you know, banished earlier. Um, and so it's, it, it kind of creates a, a crazy and then like random units from your opponent. Like it's a wild, wild thing too. So, well, now that I have AI unlocked, I'm going to be doing a lot of theory crafting because I've got plenty of yeah. cards to work with and I'm only going to get more from here. So there you go. I'll figure them all out eventually. Oh man. Is there anything else? Did, did I miss anything? Let me see. 
seasonal rotation, AI options, PV modes, card balancing. We, I mean, we kind of covered everything. We already, we, yeah. The, the AI, um, the AI colonization colony mode. Uh, did you want to share anything about that that you got? Try, I mean, trying to get some alpha before we wrap up, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know what. <laughs> let me think. Um, I mean, we've put out a bunch of explorations oh. on it, and you know, the re- yeah, the recruit a friend event. Tell us about. That. Oh yes, yes. So the avatar challenge. Um, we reserved when we sold the avatars. We reserved uh, something like twelve hundred of them to give away to players, essentially. Um, and so they're going to be given away with a couple qualifications win 25 ranked games um ref- then you will unlock like a refer a friend window essentially mm-hmm. when that referred friend signs up and they complete rookie queue then the original person will get an avatar um a reservation for an avatar and then they're just 11 prime to to claim the avatar but it's worth way way more than that so um and then the the rarest avatar of all the one of one the unknown origins avatar is in that collection it's in that pool so some random person is going to pull this like extremely rare you know avatar and already the the faction one of ones have sold for substantial amounts of money and this one you can imagine is going to be worth more um because it's the it's the rarest and the most you know mysterious of all the avatars and it looks super badass so um yeah basically the the, the idea of the contest is you need to be you know, playing and playing effectively. And you also Mm -hmm. need to be mentoring effectively because you play, you invite, you mentor in that order. And if you do all three of those things, you win. I'm excited. I want, I want a one-on-one. I'm hoping I get a one-on-one. I doubt it's going to happen, but I'm going to be playing. But imagine if you did, I I mean, that's, that's going to be like an annual salary for somebody. So, I mean, I'm already sold on, on parallels. That would just c- cement my my position even further. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm I'm not selling it. First off, I'm a gamer. I like I like rare stuff. You gotta, like you gotta hold rare on stuff. To that. Exactly. Well, the other thing is that avatar gives you rewards for all parallels. So it's like any deck that you play with, you get increased prime. And that's only for the one of ones, right? That's only that's only for that specific one. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, that, that one is that one is completely unique in the collection. Everyone's about to be running after this one. Oh, yeah, it's, it's it's interesting because we put out a few like teasers of unknown origins. There's like uh, two other cards that reference it mm-hmm. that are super rare, like fluid dynamics card back and MEV stone card back. Um, those are the only two cards that reference unknown origins in the entire set of parallel. So, and now this third asset, which is the rarest of all avatars so what is that we'll see i want it that's all i know is i want it i don't <laughs> i just want <laughs> it too. because it sounds like it's going to look cool anything one of one typically has a much better like art uh, oh it's out there you can you can see oh, what it looks like oh what's it yeah like? well, i'll look at it after this <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i don't want to ruin it you guys can go look it up too so yeah. unknown origins avatar you search it on the it's the rarest one in the open sea collection of course so speaking of events, do you guys have any like tournaments planned? I know the TCGs tend oh, yeah. to be pretty heavy on tournaments. <clears throat> we do. Um, there's the Ardent tournament upcoming, which there's already a pretty massive prize pool for this. Um, the The baseline prize pool is already like almost fifty thousand um, dollars. And then the bigger ones than Web three, that's for sure. Yeah, so basically we're going to sell these tickets uh, for the Ardent people. So the Ardent are like the top 2,500 collectors. There will be an invitational component to this as well. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty limited, but there will be some people who, are from, who aren't on the Ardent list invited. Um, and basically all of the sales of the tickets go back to the, pr- the pool, the prize pool as well. Mm-hmm. So it's possible that this gets to be approaching a $100,000 tournament um, in total prize pool. And uh, it's going to be Swiss. There's going to be like a qualification um, period. And then there's it's going to be like a Swiss tournament. And yeah, it should be pretty exciting. We're, we're going to have it streamed and do a bunch of stuff for it and promote it. But that'll be uh, end of this month. So Or end of, what, is it September yet? That'll it's be end of the month that it's about to be. How's that? <laughs> oh, man. Well, by the time this video comes out, it might be end of month. Because I'm really, there you go. We'll see. 
It's going to be the end of September. There you go. End of September. Well, anything else that I am missing? Because you guys, you guys are about to make me want to actually compete in a TCG. I've never truly competed in one. I kind of did with Legends of Runeterra for a little bit, but I love League of Legends. Couldn't stay into their card game. I played Hearthstone a lot more. And yeah. Magic the Gathering. <laughs> well, I mean, I yeah, obviously would would love to have you, and um, I think that we want there to be a lot of ways to uh, generate value, you know, by by being a competitive player. So. You know, be that uh, I own the cards and I like to trade the cards or be that I like to earn prime or be that I like to earn avatars by playing or be that I'm in a uh, prime tournament or be that I'm in a cash tournament. Like there's going to be a lot of ways to uh, generate value by being a, a top tier player. And that's how it should be, you know, and, and I've talked to a lot of Hearthstone players who were like, man, I, I played Hearthstone at an elite level for eight years and I'm down money. <laughs> and it's like, should that be the case? I mean, that's I might, an open question, but I, I, it feels a little bit shitty. You know? The thing is, I, as much as the thing that actually turned me away from TCGs was actually, you know, Magic the Gathering banning certain cards every year. Uh, the, the seasonal rotation of making the cards that I spent because I, I spent hundreds if not dollars of hours grinding and obtaining these cards to make these super awesome decks only for three to four months down the road. It's like, Oh, by the way, those aren't in rotation anymore. You can't use them. And it's like all this time and money wasted. And now yeah. you're, you guys are over here telling me, yeah, we don't want that to happen. I'm, I'm like, I'm about to collect them all. I'm about, this is about to be Pokemon yeah. parallels over here. Got to catch them all. <laughs> yeah. Know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so well, I mean, that's, that's how it should be at the end of the day. Like I, I think, you know, digital items should have uh, an ownership component. And then, you know, with digital, um, you know, cards, you don't you, like, again, if you physically print a card and distribute it, then you have a, a difficulty with making any changes to that, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so digital cards don't have that problem. And so if you add ownership to it and then you add an earn element, then all of a sudden this becomes really, really interesting. Right. And it's it, it, again, I think like TCGs is a use case for NFTs actually meaningfully solves problems. And we're all kind of looking at, you know, Web3 and like it, it's a lot of times a solution without a problem. And this is actually a solution with a problem. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that I think is really cool. And, and we've seen a lot of positive reception from the folks that we've talked to about that of like, Hey, this is actually really dope. I mean, I like that I can own my cards. I like that I can trade my digital cards. I like that I'm going to be generating value, not bleeding value. So, well, before we wrap it up, I do have, do you mind if I ask you a bit of a tougher question? Cause this is something that I'm sure you get a lot. Go ahead. Why should people in web three play parallels over the other web three TCG offerings? I think they can play whatever they want to be, to be honest with you. Um, it's preference. You know, yeah, it's a preference <laughs> thing. If you like Gods Unchained, it's great. If you like, uh, I didn't you mention know, no games. Splinter, Splinterlands, that's, that's great. I mean, uh, I think those are, those are viable games and, and that's totally fine. I mean, at the end of the day, play parallel and tell me if you like it or not. And, and, and that's why? the end of it. Right? That's it. Like, like I mean, it's, like it's it, a great you game. like it? They need yeah, feedback. Give them criticism. Yeah, it, it's. I think it's a great game, and it, and it speaks for itself. And and if you want to play other games, also you should. And and play to me, all. it's like I like to play multiple different types of games. You know, and I'm not uh, like coming into parallel. I wasn't a, a TCG player basically at all. Obviously, like everybody collected Pokemon cards. I, I collected Pokemon yep. cards, but um, I didn't like play the game really. And you know, then I got into Parallel and I became a TCG fan because of Parallel. But my favorite games are RPGs. So, you know, if you catch me grinding some RPGs, it doesn't mean I'm not, like, I still play Parallel. It doesn't, like, these, these things are, it's not mutually exclusive. Exactly. Like, if you want to play other TCGs, the more the merrier. I mean, so I, I wouldn't sit here and try and say that somebody should play our game over another Web3 game. I, that's not the way I would look at it. I would just say, try it and see if you like it. And if you like it, play it when you feel like playing it. You know, that is the best answer ever, because that's exactly what I've been trying to tell people on the timeline. Like, it's not about whose is better or who copied who yeah. or who did it better. It's the fact that to me, this is, again, just my opinion. To me, Parallels is the only sci fi themed TCG. It appeals to me more than other TCGs because I am so sick of high fantasy. And yeah. people are like, you know what? 
Yeah, that's fair. I could see that. I just don't have time for any more TCGs. And I'm like, I respect that too. That's fine. Great. I mean, yeah, <laughs> nobody's telling you otherwise. I, 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 I that is one thing. Those. There you go. I mean, that's the thing with like Web3 kind of always being adversarial. And it's like, do we, mm-hmm. do we need to? I, I don't know why we need to be comparing. I don't know why we need to be adversarial. Like, can't we just you could collab? It? Imagine maybe one day they, there's a way that maybe a, a, a God's Unchained card ends up in parallels and vice versa. Like maybe there's some crossover cards that are made between who, the two. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. At the, at the end of the day, if if you like a game, play the play game. It. That, that's that's all. I, that's my two cents on it. You know, <laughs> it's not rocket science. Just play whatever you like. Exactly. All right. You got any final thoughts before we wrap this up? I mean, I would just say if you're hearing this and you haven't signed up for Parallel, make sure you sign up and uh, you can get access pretty pretty soon. And um, if anything was was interesting to you about what we said and you have questions, you can tag us on social media. And uh, we've got people that are, are pretty much 24 hours looking at that kind of stuff now and much to their chagrin. But uh, <laughs> that's that's the reality of the situation. So, yeah, there's the there's a Twitter up there and then there's the starter decks. They're on base, so it's like if you're not a Web3 native person, just don't even bother with that. Parallel.life. Parallel.life. That's where you guys can sign up, check out the website. You can buy starter decks. You can learn more about the game. You can, yeah. If you get access, you can download oh, it. Important thing. The game is free to play. Does not require Web3 whatsoever. Does not require NFTs whatsoever. Completely free to play. That's probably the most important thing to drive home here. Is like you don't need to spend a single dollar, nor do you need to have Web3 wallets or NFT or anything. That's what I'm saying. It's there's a guy who started playing the other day, um, and he's like, I haven't played TCGs in ages, and he's top 100 with a starter deck. You know, so no, no way. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's like you don't <laughs> you don't have to spend a single dime to to play this game and and be good at it. So. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that. I love what you guys are doing. Can't wait to see more. Um, So that's going to be a wrap for us, folks. This is another fantastic episode of The Block Sauce, but it's now coming to a close. But before we say goodbye, I want to say thank you again to Fitch for hanging out with us, you know, talking me through some of the matches, showing me some combos. Um, And of course, we couldn't have done it without all of our amazing viewers and supporters because your engagement and passion fuel our drive to bring you the hottest topics and the latest games every week that we that were available uh <laughs> remember that the sauce never stops flowing stay connected with us on social media we have a block sauce twitter now or x or whatever you want to call it it's at the block sauce with a three and you can always suggest future content or games for us to check out we're definitely going to be circling back to parallels and checking out the status on them a little bit later uh as long as Fitch will join me again. Oh, I got, yeah. I got a feeling things are going to heat up. Like, it, it, it's this isn't the end. This is just the beginning. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, so, I mean, just the beginning. <laughs> oh, yeah. We got a lot more coming, and I'm going to have to stay on top of all of it for them, especially Parallels Colony. So yeah, that's going to be yeah. it. Oh, I got you. No, no, no. no. Don't worry. <laughs> He's got... like, oh, we'll get you taken care of. That's it for today, Sauce Enthusiasts. Join us next time for another thrilling episode of The Block Sauce, where we'll keep the gaming flame alive and the discussion sizzling. Stay saucy and keep gaming in the exciting realm of Web3.